Hello, my name is Felicia. I'm an online psychology major at Columbia Southern University. This presentation is an assignment for my course in history of psychology. I'm going to jump right into it. There is an age old debate in the mental health community pertaining to the effective use of talk therapy as opposed to medication therapy. Today, most members of the mental health community believe that the combination of biological, psychological, and social factors contribute to the development of mental health conditions. Some therapists believe in therapy through medication and some believe in talk therapy. I believe in talk therapy. And so therefore, as a future therapist, I will employ talk therapy for my clients depending on what their need, their complaints and needs are. If a client is in distress and just wants to talk about what bothers him or her, I will use talk therapy. In the event of children with anxiety, fear or distress, cognitive and talk therapy will be applied. According to Freud's theory, children use play to express their feelings when they are anxious or distressed. Talk therapy is used to treat phobias, anxiety, and or fear. And there are usually two goals that aim to help the client. One is to assist the client to reduce their fear and anxiety. And the second goal is to help the client learn how to transform their response to a fear situation or object. It is my goal to use these forms of psychotherapy to, deter, to discover and resolve the underlying conflicts and dynamics that cause the phobia or other disorders. Some may ask how to start with talk therapy and in my case, I will start my clients off with an initial appointment, often referred to as an intake interview. During this appointment, the client will describe what brings him or her to therapy, which is known as the presenting problem. As the therapist, I will ask questions to help bring to light the nature of the problem, how long the client has been suffering and how severe it has been. This will help me determine the goals for therapy. At, at the end of the first session, I will have the beginnings of a formulation of the problem and a possible treatment plan. To understand where psychology is today, it is essential to look back at where we've been and how we got here. Freud's work provides an insight into an important movement in psychology that helped transform how we think about mental health and how we approach psychological disorders. Clients rely on the therapist's knowledge and hope to be treated with empathy and compassion. They want to be heard and hope for empathy throughout the time of therapy and treatment. So it is without saying that a patient's free free will is acknowledged and respected. In psychology, the question of fate versus free will makes sense, since a client must operate of their own volition and do nothing and anything against their free will. The question for psychologists about free will versus determinism is to protect the client. Freud believed that a patient can act of their free will, for instance, by allowing a therapist to gather information through hypnosis, through the unconscious mind. Talk therapy is initiated by the client without pressure. In other words, the patient should have control of what they say or he or she has to want to. Hypnosis is not used as often anymore due to complaints against therapists based on ethic, unethical behavior. Free will is the idea that we have control over our actions, that we choose when to act and what actions to perform. We act of our own volition and are free to choose our behaviors. 
Free will is tied to the notion that we have a conscious and it undeniably feels like we are free to choose what we do. Determinism, mis, excuse me, determinism, on the other hand, states that all actions are part of a cause and effect sequence, down to the atomic level. We do not govern our actions, rather they are the result of physical or external forces over which we have no control.